to everyone the matching problem of uh, um, that uh, and there are n people and uh, they put their hat there in a box and they have to find their one hat from the box so you have to compute the probability that uh, person is getting at least uh, what is the probability that person is getting a person is getting his own hat his or her own hat what is the probability that you have to compute so if uh, n people are there then how you have to find it so simply if you ask that uh, uh, how many possibilities are there without any uh, specific things then there would be uh, if n people are there n hat are there then it is one to one map what we call one to one map bijection so bijection so in bijection if you are saying that how many number of bijections are there factorial n number of bijections factorial n number of bijections and how you see excuse me you get up get up just take your bag and go out just go out go out just go out just i am asking you to go out just go out Got in. Okay. So the same problem I am discussing. The exact uh, competition was like this format. Okay. Probability of uh, this uh, you have to compute. That means it is talking about at least uh, one person received his or her own hat. Okay. That probability we are. willing to compute if you focus on this it is talking about union or this this one is talking about union okay so just apply that principle of inclusion exclusion that we had seen probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus probability of b minus probability of a intersection b but that one is uh, for uh, two event kind of thing here n events are there okay in union so you have to expand it for n case so that's why we are getting here these terms if you try to talk uh, how many terms would be there how many terms would be there here no just recall binomial theorem what is the a plus uh, if you are taking uh, saying what is the a, uh, a plus b to the power n A plus B. How many terms would be there in uh, expansion of a uh, binomial expansion? N plus one. N plus one. So here also it is just in the same framework. N plus one terms were there. And what are the coefficients there? N choose zero. N choose one. N choose two. Like N choose n. N choose n means <coughs> one. All you are taking together. So there is only one group. So similar concept is coming through this principle, equilibrium principle. So uh, under this principle. we had already seen that uh, the formula this probability it is taking very simple form what we call it n choose 0 what is value of n choose 0 n choose 0 1 okay okay n choose compute n choose 0 okay 1 it is coming on so little bit difference here here at least summation term is coming now so sum of probability of a union uh, probability of a1 plus or probability of a2 plus like that little bit but n n plus 1 terms are there little bit changes are there and so so as so, so, nc1 what is the value of nc1 n so n nc1 one is coming zero you can't go for that okay zero n to zero will be not here Uh, n c one, n c two, n c three like that. N c n. N terms would be there, not uh, n plus one. N terms are there here. Yeah. Like intersection n sign. That one is uh, actually intersection of n events. It is short notation of intersection. Short notation of intersection. The right hand side. in the right right most side you observe uh, intersection the last and there are many type of intersection intersection uh, two at a time three at a time four at a time n at a time 
So, like those kind of things are coming. Now, after this assumptions, we come to see this simple formula n, n choose 1, n choose 2, n choose 3, n choose n, like that it is coming. Now, it is all about computation of probability of A1, probability of A intersection, uh, A1 intersection, A2, like that. Okay. So, what is probability of A1? What is probability of A1? Number of element in A1 divided by number of element in sample space. In every class, he does like that. Whether uh, his parents are staying here. Uh, later, later convince him to sit uh, anywhere uh, in last batch so that class will be not disturbed. Uh, the mathematics is very focused. Listen. So, how you will compute the probability of A1? Just using the formula what you had seen in finite sample uh, space, finite sample space. So, number of element in A1, what would be that? Factorial n minus 1, but so 1 is already fixed now, 1 hat is already fixed, so uh, the option would be uh, that person is having factorial n minus 1 options, okay, and divide by total possible options, that one, that one is factorial n. So, if simplify it is coming as 1 by n. Then, uh, likewise, what is the probability of uh, A1 intersection A2? 2 will, fix, 2 will be fixed there. So, number of element in A1 intersection A2 would be, it would be factorial n minus 2. So, what is the probability of A intersection A1 and A2? It is uh, factorial uh, n minus 2 divided by factorial n. And if you are willing to put in the counting principle what we had seen previously, so you can say that it is n p n minus 2. If you try to put in formula uh, in order uh, to relate with the permutation, so it is coming like this. This one is just for notation, permutation kind of things. It is just for notation. Likewise, you can compute probability of A1 intersection, A2 intersection, A3. It is coming like this way. Okay. So you put all these things here in together and simplify. After simplification, what you are getting? You are getting uh, uh, this probability 1 minus factorial 2 plus factorial 3 plus it will go like that factorial n. Anyone can see what, uh, what does it represent? If you try to see, if you try to see uh, that uh, exponential function, series of exponential function, Taylor series of exponen exponential function, what is that? What is the Taylor series of exponential function? e to the power x in the Taylor series. In calculus class you might have seen, no? What is the Taylor series of uh, exponential function? It is 1 plus x by factorial 1 plus x square factorial 2 like that. If you take x equal to minus 1, what you will get? So, you can see here this can be re written as in term of e to the power minus 1, but e to the power minus 1 contains uh, 1 minus 1 like e to the power minus 1 what, we, what would be e to the power minus 1, it would be what 1 minus 1 plus 1 square by factorial 2. What is minus 1 square by factorial 2 is what? 
1 by factorial 2 then minus 1 by factorial 3 plus it will go like that infinity it will go up to infinity like that e uh, to the power minus 1 it is having. So, if you bring this uh, uh, all this series this part uh, left hand side and take e to the power minus 1 right hand side what you will observe what you will observe you will observe this this series ok and you are going up to n terms not uh, you know that remainder after n term remainder after n terms it is approaching to 0 when n is approaching to infinity. So, you can talk about approximation of this term approximation. So, it is just approximation it is coming as approximation see so the all term all these are what? So, what you have taken? So, uh, take all these summation term uh, bring left hand side keep 1 only right hand side and take e to the power minus 1 right hand side. So, this term all in together that means this term it becomes what 1 minus e to the power approximately 1 minus e to the power minus 1. So, you, what is your probability of this uh, uh, that uh, at least one people go, uh, uh, got his own head what is the probability? It is 1 minus 1 by e or e to the power minus 1 that you so this is the probability. So, how you got this probability here it is very simple to compute it uh, using inclusion exclusion principle you got it through inclusion exclusion principle ok. This problem is re really difficult problem it is not like that I am saying that it is very easy problem it is a difficult problem but got the solution through inclusion exclusion principle and various uh, uh, idea of permutations were, uh, were there. Uh, per per permutation did you get in the last example how I had uh, uh, discussed about uh, all possible presentation in term of uh, uh, that uh, mapping from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3 that means 3 percent to 3 hat 3 hat. So, uh, how many per per permutation would be there factorial 3 6 permutations would be there what are those permutation. So, like you are going from you can increase it to 4 as well 1 2 3 2 1 2 3 ok. So, what are the possible permutation? You can give name ok. Uh, you can say that one permutation is 1 to 3 how you how you will per, it is a bijection 1 to 3 in a bracket how you will read 1 to 3 you will read 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1 what does it mean? It means 1 goes to 2 2 goes to 3 and 3 goes to 1. So, this this one is a bijection from 1 to 3 to 1 to 3 and we denote it by this short notation 1 to 3 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1. So, it is a bijection it is a map from 1 to 3 1 to 3. If I write to 1 3 2 what is meaning of this one? 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 is it differ, different from this or not? It is different it is another permutation. Then you write 1 2 what is meaning of this one? 1 goes to 2, 2 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 3 itself 3 goes to 3 itself. So, 1 2 3 this one is the third permutation and what is the uh, fourth permutation? 1 3. So, 1 goes to 3, 3 goes to 1 and 2 goes to 2 2 is fixed kind of thing don't say fix it is mapped directly like that map to 2 itself. Now, another is one is 2 3 2 3 2 goes to 3 3 goes to 2 and 1 goes to 1 how many permutation till now you have seen 5 what is the remaining permutation 1 goes to 1 2 goes to 2 3 goes to 3 that permutation we call it identity identity map so, identity map is another. So, 1 goes to 1 so that you can denote it by 1 I we are not giving function notation here we are giving notation in term of number itself number itself. So, that is a 1 or you can re represent it by 2 that means that means there is no other option to go. So, 2 will go to itself 
2 goes to 2. That means others are absent means 1 goes to 1 and 3 goes to 3. So you can represent the identity map by this bracket 1 or bracket 2 or bracket 3. There are 3 representations, but all are talking about same thing. So in total, how many permutations you observe? 6 permutations in 3 number. These are the permutations. If you are same way, you can do task for uh, permutation of 4 numbers. That means you are finding factorial 4 bijection map from 1, 2, 3, 4 to 1, 3, 1, 2, 3, 4 itself. Okay. So that kind of approach, permutation you have to visualize like in that approach. In mapping wise, you have to visualize. So uh, things would be much clear to you. Okay. Now, I will talk about one more thing. Uh, once you have already uh, having idea of all these uh, uh, counting principles, then you are trying to be more a specific. What is that? So we will try to, uh, we have discussed about outcome, we have discussed about uh, event. Now we will discuss about trial. What is trial? So basic trial, it happens with uh, binomial Bernoulli trials. Bernoulli trials. So Bernoulli trial is talking about, yeah, that one is failure and success. Success and failure. So if you are having a sample of space with finite structure or finite number of outcome, then you can talk about failure and success. If it is, if you are tossing a coin, then easily you will get head and tail, two outcomes. So one of them you can consider as a success, another you can consider as a failure. So you are having a Bernoulli trial. If you are uh, rolling a dice, then you can come up, how you will come up with Bernoulli trial? Even or odd. So it is one kind of classification, for binary classification problem. You are trying to classify all the outcome in two categories, hey, failure and success. So you can count getting even phase as a success, getting odd phase as a failure. So like that. Uh, there are various things like uh, if you are uh, uh, selecting numbers from uh, uh, in, uh, positive integers or natural number, you can again call it even and odd, even odd, even odd. So that kind of things. So even you can consider as a success, odd you can consider as a failure. So the starting trial in probabilistic manner. So Bernoulli trial is the starting thing. So if you are having Bernoulli trial, then you come up with, uh, there are more number of Bernoulli trial, then you can come up with binomial coefficients. Binomial coefficient. By means two. Nominal power, it is coming in term of that. So binomial coefficient. So what is happening that, suppose you are performing a binomial trial n time. If you are performing a binomial trial n time, each binomial trial contains how many success? One. One success or one failure, whichever you give attention. So you're not, right now you are having only two things, failure and success in terms of Bernoulli trial. So either you count number of success or number of failures. So number of success, it, it will go, uh, you will, you can call it, if you are performing n number of Bernoulli trial, how many success you will have? You can call it K success. Suppose there are K success. If there are K success, what does it mean? Out of N, there are K success this means rest of things would be in failure category. N minus K failure. So if you once you are talking about K successes, that, that means at the same time you are saying that N minus K failures are there. Okay. So if that situation is there, so what is meaning of uh, binomial coefficient here? Uh, it is talking about, uh, this one is talking about uh, successes, this one is talking about failure. So uh, you have to find some relation of binomial coefficient. Whenever you deal with Bernoulli uh, trial, various time, n time, that tossing coin, n time. That means by default you will come across binomial coefficient. By default, default binomial coefficient will come there because it is dealing with n number of Bernoulli trial. And there are two kind of things, failure and success kind of things. So failure will collectively sum up to n minus k and success will collectively sum up to k, so like that. So by default, binomial coefficient will come here and you need to recall some identity related with binomial coefficient. What are those? So n plus 1 choose k plus 1, it is equal to, it can be decomposed in these two forms, n choose k plus 1 plus uh, n choose k. So this pr proof is very simple. If you expand it, you will get proof. And there is 
again if someone is facing problem regarding proof of this one there are three way to prove a mathematical statement that we call it result what are those approach in high school you might have seen one approach in plus 2 that one is mathematical induction have you heard mathematical induction wherever there is a uh, there is an involvement of natural number by default you can apply mathematical induction that means a step one is true for n equal to 1 or n equal to 2 or n equal to some n not some kind of uh, uh, 3 something like that okay 3 or 4 something like that then what you have to do uh, in uh, next step you suppose that it is true for k and by using that you prove that it is true for k plus 1 you uh, start with it is true that a statement is true for k and you through the through that you establish that it is also true for k plus 1 and hence you can say that it is true for all k it is true for all k that is the approach of mathematical induction inductive property inductive inductively you are you are saying that first is coming then next is coming then next is coming like induction inductive property is coming there so that mathematical induction through that also you can prove it okay next uh, uh, all these are uh, identity involved in binomial coefficient this also you can prove it uh, otherwise you can try yourself if you face problem let me know i will prove it these are simple tasks that is that one is coming from your high school that you had already seen in uh, your high school just try to establish all these so this will be very helpful in proving that so here this one is decomposing in how many uh, component uh, that k number of components something like that okay so it is further decomposition it is in two uh, component it is in k number k number of component something like that okay now next if i you perform bernoulli trial n times so what is the probab suppose uh, there are k successes so what is the probability of success k success it is first uh, k success when you are saying k success means there are k heads if you are tossing a coin there are k heads in that outcome and at the same time n minus k failure so what is the probability of k success p to the p p p p into p into p how many times k times and n uh, 1 minus p will come n minus k times so p to the power k into n minus 1 minus p to the power n minus k but tell me uh, how many possi possible combinations are there for that if you do it is not uh, uh, permutation it is combination that means how many combinations of k successes n choose k so those so it is combination all about combination a b and b a both are different so you have to come up with like that in order in a b and b are different but in if you come in combination uh, we are not giving attention to order a b and b a both are safe we are not giving attention to order okay in permutation we are giving a b and b a both would be different in permutation but in combination both are both are safe like here so so that's why n choose k term is coming here so what is the probability of k successes we will get it like this way so you can remember that it is not equally likely what initially we had seen in case of uh, equally likely like uh, tossing a coin or throwing a dice there each outcome is having same probability but here each outcome is having not same probability if k equal to uh, 0 what is the probability n choose 0 that means 1 uh, p to the power 0 1 1 minus p to the power n if you take n equal to 1 probability is different so for p uh, probability of 0 is different probability of 1 is different probability of 2 is different so all these outcomes are having different probability having different probability so, so here the probability is uh, probability measure is distributed in non non uniform way not in uniform way it is here all these uh, outcomes are not equally likely are you getting meaning of this or not yes, sir. so when you uh, bernoulli trial is equally likely if you take a single bernoulli trial it is equally likely but if you sum up all those trials you are taking n trials in together bernoulli trial no more it is uniformly distributed there is no uniform law non uniform things are coming here so here in order to measure that binomial coefficient is coming by default so i think uh, it might be clear to everyone so like uh, very simple question uh, i choose three cards from the standard de deck of cards so how many cards a deck 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 is giving 52 cards so what is the probability that these uh, cards uh, 
contain at least one egg. How many egg would be there? How many egg would be there? Four. Four of four of different color. No, sorry, different category. That uh, what you are getting. In total, how many eggs? Hmm. A total. Okay. So uh, here, question is at least one. Uh, what is the probability that these cards? So you have taken three cards. Okay. So what is the probability that at least one card uh, is egg? Okay. So this is sample of space. It will be what? What is the sample of space? You are taking three cards from a deck of 52 cards. So it would be 52 choose three. Okay. Then event of interest is the select uh, cards contain at least one egg. And in uh, total, uh, there are four egg. Okay. Then in total, how many non non egg? It is 48. 48. So go to complete. Uh, here compute a complement. First, A complement. What is how many? How many? It is easy to compute uh, size of A complement. That one is 48. Choose three. So, what is the probability of uh, A complement? Simply through that formula, you will get it, and, and hence you will get probability of A. So, all these involves binomial coefficient. Simply, I would like to say that we have computed this one using binomial coefficient. Okay, that that is the use of binomial coefficient. Now, tell me, uh, if you are having binomial coefficient, then uh, is it that uh, binomial trial coming everywhere? Binomial, think like here in this course, how many possibilities are there after completing this course? How many possibilities are there? Either you will get pass or you will get fail or pending results, something like that. You can put in pending, withhold, something like that. So, three possibilities there. So, is it uh, Binomial trial, no Bernoulli trial. If there are more than two uh, possibilities, you can't say it is a Bernoulli trial. It is a multinomial trial. If there are more than two possibilities in a single trial, in a single trial, then that one is coming in multinomial, and the corresponding coefficient would be multinomial coefficient. So grouping, you, that means you are trying to uh, take a situation like that. So there would be failure, success, and failure, success, and left one or something like that. It is not like that. Everyone continues that few used to left. So that also. So uh, that failure, success, and other other. So three possibilities. That one is multinomial trial. It is no more binomial. It is multinomial. Okay. So m uh, multinomial again. Uh, this one was motivation for binomial. Now here situation is coming for multinomial, multinomial coefficient, it is coming in this form of, you def, uh, here just it is very much generalized from binomial. Binomial you had written it like factorial n divided by factorial k, k is what number of success in the, or number of people in the first group and n minus k is number of people in the second group. The second group you call uh, failure group, the first group uh, in binomial you had called a success group. Okay. Now, if you are having multinomial kind of group or multinomial trial, then you will call uh, here just k has been replaced by n1. That number of people in the first group, n2 number of people in the second group, uh, nr number of people in the r group. In total, r groups are there. R group. So uh, that means r options are there. R if you are uh, performing a trial, multinomial trial, there would be in total R options like that. So, multinomial trial. So, here this one is the multinomial coefficient. This is the multinomial coefficient. Okay. So, uh, for binomial, you are just taking two terms x1 plus x2 to the power n and you are getting binomial coefficient. Now, you are taking R number of terms. What is the power of this uh, uh, x1 plus x2 plus up to x uh, to the power n? How you will expand? How you will expand it? it? Just it is very much theory is very much similar to binomial expansion. This expansion we call it multinomial expansion. This one is multinomial exp expansion and corresponding coefficient would be replaced by multinomial coefficient. Corresponding binomial coefficient will be replaced by multinomial coefficient 
and here in the binomial what we what we, we might have seen there x1 to the power k and x to the power n minus k that kind of things we, we might have seen but here what we will observe uh, x to the power x1 to the power n1 x to the power n2 like xr to the power nr and sum of all these would be what n sum of all these would be n but there also sum of k plus sum of k and n minus k is what k plus n minus k is what again n so same it is generalized it is coming with r groups r r multinomial trials that's where uh, you have to remember this one this must satisfy this must satisfy you have to see it like this. so this one is multinomial expansion we call it multinomial expansion so this kind of problem will come there when multinomial trial there is a one coin and you will see that there are three options head tail apart from another bias coin if there is a bias coin and that thickness of coin is much la uh, larger then it will got a stuck it will ascend position one ascend position three options would be there so probability of getting head it would be not 0.5 it would be less than point 5 and probability of getting tail also that would be not 0 0.5 that would be also less than that there is other kind of probability as well like that if that kind of kind of coin you see then such possibility is there multinomial things you have to proceed with and then multinomial uh, distribution will also come there in second module okay so here question is coming that 10 people have uh, have a port luck five people will be selected to bring a main this okay a picnic something like that you can call it uh, bring a, a main this five people have been selected to bring a main this three people main this contains various things uh, three people will bring drinks and two people will bring dessert okay so how many ways uh, can they can they be divided into these three groups how you can divide uh, these 10 people in these three group what are those group main main dish drinks and desserts so how it is a what kind of thing it is a multinomial trial three options are there in a single trial three options are there three options uh, three uh, three things are there three outcomes possible not like only two three outcomes are possible so simply you have to apply here multinomial coefficient and get the solution it is very easy to, so first we can choose five people uh, okay uh, first we will choose five people out of ten what would be that selection process ten choose five then remaining five from the remaining five five we have already selected then in remaining five we have to choose three how what what would be selection uh, five choose three then what how many remaining we will have two out of two we have to choose two two choose two that means one okay so so through multiplication this one is coming through multiplication rule this one is coming through multiplication rule this one is coming through multiplication rule and simplified it is taking the for after simplification this will cancel out uh, this will cancel out and after simpl simplification it is taking the form of multinomial coefficient this one is this side in the left hand side it is coming in the multiplication rule okay and and right hand side what you observe the multinomial formula so both are same really both are same so this one you can say that it is a derivation this one is single notation notation multi if you when you call it uh, there are a group of 10 people n is equal to 10 and you are saying that uh, there are three groups one group contain 5 another group contain 3 another group contain 2 n1 equal to 5 and 2 equal to 3 and and 3 equal to 2 then what is the multinomial coefficient this one what this uh, how we have computed this one in this way this is multiplication rule and this one is multinomial coefficient okay so this kind of thing will come there then there are various other problem actually this one is again related to probability if you are willing to compute probability in the uh, in a trial with multinomial outcomes multinomial if you are performing a trial and there are multi r number of uh, out possible outcome is in a single trial then what is the uh, pr probability how you will compute probability of uh, uh, that uh, how you will compute probability through multinomial this this is the multinomial it is also you can observe that I have several times i used to say that it is talking about partition it is talking 
it is talking about partition of n into groups r groups okay partition so how many so it is up to you in how many way you can partition that so you are counting the probability this associated pro probability so if you roll a dice 18 times what is the probability that each number appears exactly 3 what is the probability of getting uh, a single face 1 by 6 and you are uh, rolling a dice 18 times and what is the further things each one appears exactly 3 then what is that probability 1 by 6 to the power 3 then 1 by 6 how many times it will come 6 times so 1 by 6 to the power 18 and uh, what is the desired probability how many possible combination would be there how many possible combination would be there how many 18 time you are rolling how many possible combination would be there it will come from multinomial coefficient that means you have group of six faces each face comes how many times three times each face exactly three times each face come so group of six uh, faces phase one phase two phase three phase four phase five phase six so that's where this one is just it is competition of one outcome it is competition of one uh, competition probability of one outcome but how many outcomes are there that will be how many outcomes where the how many possible combinations are there or outcomes you can how many such so that will be computed by multinomial coefficient okay so you have to compute it like that if a dice is coming there you are having multinomial trial if you are uh, tossing a coin you are having Bernoulli trial Bernoulli trial and you have to work on this problem see ross book there would be various example everyone got the book from library yes, sir. or also now this day easily you can find e copy you can request from librarian sagar he, he may have e copy he will provide that so you go for e copy that one is also fine uh, other other than that i had mentioned that uh, very good book from um, mit that one is uh, written by dmitri batiskas introduction to probability dmitri batiskas and John Sitiski, something like that. Both both are from uh, Greek, uh, Greece, and they are working in uh, MIT. Very experienced one. The second concept is uh, conditional probability, and we had already discussed conditional probability. So I won't go to de definition of uh, conditional probability. I told that uh, conditional probability all about that. You come up with uh, if you are willing to compute probability of an event, then it is not like directly you have to completely talk about the sample of space what you have to talk about the partial information provided to you through which you have to compute the probability so the partial information that you say that you say that it is given to you so now if you are willing to compute probability of a and one scenario is given partial scenario that we call it uh, b then what is the probability of a given b, scenario b and that we compute probability by, by saying that how much a is happening from the perspective of B. How much A is happening from the perspective of B? So that's why we write it probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B. Suppose our sample of space is finite. In that case, what is the probability of A given B? Number of element in A intersection B divided by number of element in B. We don't have to bother about sample of space. Nowhere sample of space is coming in the conditional probability. Okay. So a uh, few things you should recall it like that. What is, uh, if you are having two events, A and B, when we will say that these two are independent? Occurrence of one first is not affecting the occurrence of other, happening of one. Then we say that A and B are independent. So, we say that probability of A given B is equal to probability of A. If B, B is happening first and it is not affecting the A, then simply we say that these two are independent. Right now, this one is first definition of independent event. Later, I will give another definition of independent. This one is the first definition. But if happening of A is not affecting the happening of B, then we say that A and B are independent. That means, uh, if probability of A given B, conditional probability is just equal to probability of A. Okay, then we say that A and B are independent and vice versa. B is also independent of A. Okay, now another thing. Uh, what is mutually exclusive? 
definition is written here. What is mutually exclu exclusive event? You might have heard. When? Having common element, that one is different. In the second, I am talking about. In the second, what is the difference between mutually exclusive and mutually disjoint? And if you try to observe it closely, you will see the relation also. Actually, uh, mutually exclusive is more generalized. Mutually disjoint is a specific. It is contained within mutually exclusive. Actually, mutually ex disjoint means no common element. Disjoint, no common element, no common outcome. Okay, no common outcome of the exper random experiment. No common outcome. That one is mutually disjoint. Disjoint means no common outcome. Okay, because outcome we are getting in the random uh, experiment. So that's why uh, A and B are mutually disjoint. It means both are not sharing any common outcome. What is meaning of mutually exclusive? Both are not occurring yeah, both are not occurring together. So that is. So when you are defining mutually exclusive, that means probability of occurrence of both in together is zero. Probability of occurrence of both in together it would be zero. Like that, if you are taking continuous uh, sample of space, there I had told that probability of occurrence of a single point is what? Zero. So, if you talk about A intersection B and we say that these are mutually exclusive, what does it mean? They may have some common point of intersection or common point, but occurrence of common point would be zero. A single point, probability of single point would be zero now. So, that is thing. So, mutually exclusive is that probability of occurrence of both event is zero and mutually disjointed there is no common outcome that is so if you you also know that what is the probability of empty set or impossible event zero so you know that uh, mutually disjoint it is implying that probability of a union b equal to zero also you know the probability of uh, a probability of a union b equal to uh, phi empty set no common thing and what is the probability of phi what is the probability of phi? Zero. So here it implies that means this one is implying this one imply this result. Okay. This one imply this result. What is meaning of that? Mutually, mutually disjoint events contain in mutually exclusive. So when I used to say I several times used to say that if this relation is here, uh, this one is logical relation, it is not uh, like uh, uh, I am calling it say P and Q are small. P implies Q. If you say P implies Q, that means P is contained in Q. That means Q is bigger. This one is Q. Within Q, you observe P. P implies Q. When it will be false? When P implies Q is false? When P is false and Q is true? Is it possible that P is inside Q and uh, you are saying that uh, P is false and Q is true. It is possible. Something inside that, it is not possible. No? So, when it is false, when P is true and Q is false. In other cases, it would be true. In other cases, P, P implies Q also true. Logical proof that in this mathematics you will come to see. And also here, uh, same thing that, uh, that means mutually exclusive event. This one is the mutually exclusive. Mutually exclusive, you write it, M E in short. Uh, within mutually exclusive, mutually disjoint events are contained. So, these are mutually disjoint events. Okay. Did you get meaning of this one? Difference of this one? So, mutually disjoint is a special case of mutually exclusive. It is inside that. So, mutually exclusive having larger meaning. Okay, larger meaning like that. So, I think uh, there would be no issue what you might have already uh, seen in there are various examples. Do we have time? I actually don't. I will go for attendance. In other lecture, we will discuss in detail uh, regarding 